I'm going to share my screen, Google Chrome. Oh, yep, make sure that my sound is all set up and share. I learned from last time, Jen, look at that. And from here, I'm gonna do present. Yeah, it's like, it's like night and day not having to do those two things. I can't even tell you um, what a big difference it makes. All right. So you are in a session about slides for design. I'm not just teaching you about how to use it as a desktop publisher, just because I love to use it as a design tool, but you're still probably going to see some skills that you can use when you're using slides in general. So don't feel like you have to use it for the purposes that I'm teaching it for. You might be like, hey, I don't need it for that, but I could use it for this. You won't hurt my feelings. That's totally fine. My favorite phrase is form follows function. Um, it's awesome if it looks cute, but if it's not functional, then who cares? So we're going to be talking about how um, when you're designing things, you want to be thinking about the best way that it functions. And then if it looks great, that's even better. And I have a video for you on self care today because I know I'm going to need some of it. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's not what I wanted. I want to hit play. Okay. Uh, what are some of the ways that you practice self care? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. That's definitely a skill I need to get better at. <laughs> Self-care is hard, especially in this profession. However, my focus has been to get outside more, do more engagement with our environment. I'm cranking up the tunes in the kitchen. I'm cooking something delicious for my family. There is more to life than just work, even if you really enjoy your career a lot, like we do. I don't grade papers at home. I don't check my email very much at home. And uh, I'm a better teacher when I have established healthy boundaries with work and leave work at work. So one of the ways that I practice self-care is being able to say no. Sometimes you have to be able to take a step back and refresh before going on to that next project. One minute meditations. I just close my eyes, take a deep breath, and try not to think too much about what happens. And when I open my eyes, I feel much better. Try to turn your brain off um, and let it be quiet sometimes disconnecting from technology and distractions and spending time with the people that I love the most. Before you assist others with the oxygen mask, assist yourself first. I like to exercise and, and be with my family, but yeah, assist yourself before assisting others. I think it's really important to give myself the time to be creative, even actually really digging in and researching is creative for me. I play piano in the evenings, I read a book, I try to take time that is both being still and also being active. Spending time in prayer, practicing yoga, or even spending time outdoors, like going boonie stomping um, around the jungles of Guam. Fresh air and um, movement are key to restoring my sanity and perspective. I get up before anybody in my family when it's still dark outside and um, I go to the gym on some mornings or I go uh, just sit and have some quiet time to myself. Or I am going for a walk or I'm reading a book or I'm taking a nap on the weekend. I practice self-care by traveling. Sometimes it's good to get out of our, our bubble. My best mode of self-care is to learn from my students. I've learned patience. I've learned empathy. I've learned the latest dance move. To reach out to other teachers, share experiences, and have somebody to bounce ideas off of. It rejuvenates you and helps you reignite that passion for teaching. So yeah, I know that that's, especially this weekend, try and carve out some time for self-care. I know that we'll all probably be doing some work over the weekend to prep for what's going on in the next few weeks, but um, trying to find that time to yourself. For me, it's sitting on the porch where I won't allow myself to bring my phone out there. And uh, it's hard for the first 15 or 20 minutes. And then finally, I'm able to calm down and, and be okay without being tethered. I want to say something about yesterday before I hit the next part. 
it was interesting teaching this way yesterday. I had the people in the library and I had those of you on my computer. And because I'm sharing my screen all the time, I can't multitask. I can't be like checking my email or prepping my next class or doing anything besides focusing on all of you. And because I don't do that anymore, like I haven't really been able to focus on one thing deeply at the same time in years. I've always been able to multitask. It was a nice feeling to be able to give all of my focus like I am right now to all of you and not worry about anything else. I've shut my email off. I don't even look at it during these four hours. And it does make it a little trickier on the other end when I finally do open it. But it, it has allowed me to focus in a new way and it's a good feeling. So even though I'm feeling frazzled at times, um, these four hours are really enjoyable and I'm, I'm loving them. So I just thought I would share that. So you're just stuck with me for this one. I'm not giving you too many things that you're gonna do on your own, but you're welcome to play if you want at the same time, whatever works for you. And let me, let's go to the Google Doc. I don't even know if I put anything in it. I might, oh, I'm, I think I did put something in there. So Deb, if at any point someone has a question, don't be afraid to interrupt me. I can hear like when um, the, the sound changes. All right, let's go to the Google Doc. The right Google Doc, there we go. Oh, I know what I put in here this morning because creating a screenshot is such a valuable skill. It is something I do dozens of times a day, so much that when I went to talk about it yesterday, I didn't even know what keys to tell you to push because my fingers just do it automatically. Kind of like turning your key in the car or punching your code into your phone. You don't, you might not even know your code anymore. You just know what the path is and it's part of who you are. So the same thing goes for me with screenshots. I know that creating a screenshot of your entire screen is probably something you're familiar with, but what I like to do is to take a screenshot of certain parts of my screen if I'm needing to share something. For instance, this part here on this page is a screenshot of a web page that I was on earlier that tells you how to create a screenshot if you're on a Chromebook. And because I always use my Mac and I don't use the PC or the Chromebook very much at Susie? all. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, yes. A few people have said that the uh, screen is blurry. Yeah, we had that in the last one too. Are those the Quashnet friends, the blurry screen? Yes. Yes. Um, I don't know what to do about it. I know it's blurry. Um, I'm gonna let Sean know later on and hopefully we can figure that out and see. Um, I'm hoping that the recording is not blurry later on when we watch it, but hopefully it, hopefully it gets better. So my apologies, I, I, I wish I knew how to fix that, but thank you. Um, so usually when I'm trying to teach people how to do a screenshot on a Chromebook, I have to reteach myself because I never remember how to do it, but it's your control, then your shift, and then they call it the shift windows button, which is right in here on your Chromebook. It looks like a rectangle with a couple of lines after it. That's how you create the little crosshair that will allow you to take a screenshot. If you're on a PC, there's a little app in there called the snipping tool, and that allows you to take a screenshot of the whole screen or just a small selection. And then on a Mac, it's command shift four to get that little selection. So that's the only thing I've put into your Google Docs right now or your um, about this presentation, because I feel like that's the most important skill when it comes to doing what I'm going to show you next. So now, which one am I on? Teach with, designing with. Oh, I need to open up a new Google slide presentation. I'm gonna ditch these. I'm gonna delete, shift and click the last one and delete. All right, I'm gonna start with a new title slide. I'm gonna drag across it and I'm gonna delete what I have on there. So I have a nice blank slide. So, Susie, before you begin, yes. sorry, do you have a, a question? Okay. Um, sure. Anne Marie Finn um, said that she's having trouble with Google Slides. It keeps telling her to, that it's taking too long to save, so editing is not available, and she hasn't been able to save anything for two days. Oh my goodness! Yeah. I have you tried? Um, have you tried logging out and logging, uh, like shutting down the computer or logging out of Google and back in? Susie, this is Mary Russell. I just tried, I was on Google Docs and I got the same red thing across my screen. 
Oh, that's awesome. So I think it's a system, something's going on. Yeah, maybe it is. We might see it happen to me while I'm teaching. Let's go out to breakfast instead. <laughs> um, if it's something that's been stuck for two days, I would try all of the shut down, restart, log in, log out things and see if that helps. Hopefully, hopefully it does the trick. Let me know, Anne-Marie, how you make out. She did say she's oh. tried many times. That's so sad. That. Okay. Um, and then a suggestion for the people that it's blurry. Mine was blurry too when the screen was really small, but if you use the bar that goes down um, on the right hand side and, and make the, the faces of all the other people smaller, then the, and your screen will get bigger and it's less blurry. Does that make sense? So you're talking on the, um, the Brady Bunch view? Yes, so yeah. instead of having that, if you slide the bar over and just make a strip view, of the people, then you'll have um, a bigger screen. And when it gets bigger, it's less blurry. Oh, I gotcha. Yep. I gotcha. Like right now, I can't see any of your faces. I keep mine just, I'm oh, okay. hiding the thumbnail views. Yeah. So I'm not looking at any of you right now. You could be well, doing naughty things and I'd never know. <laughs> well, as a teacher, we can't let that happen. <laughs> I know you we can't. Have to make yep. sure they're not doing naughty things. But um, we do. Um, but we do have the, the people showing plus the chat showing plus the, the screen. So maybe that would help people if they make it larger. Yep. Yep. All right. Hopefully some of those suggestions work. Okay. So what I like to use Google Slides for sometimes is just a design tool, a tool that allows me to create custom, I'm going to use the word artwork. I don't want to have all my math teachers run away because I'm not trying to make it sound like this is an artsy fartsy class, but I think that it will help if you need to create anything for your landing page or for your playlists or for your students for anything that's more customized. And because Google, when you go and check on Google images and you're looking for certain types of clip art or certain types, types of art, um, it's not always free to use. And so that copyright is really important. I think I explained, I don't know, one of these classes that when I was building the website that's going to house all of our buttons to our courses, I wanted to be able to put like third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. So I'm searching on Google for free to use copyright free images that are, you know, blue because I want everything to be blue and I want them to be nice and I want them all to match. But then I'm like, I can't get that to work. So actually, let me open up my drumslides.google.com. This is going to bring me to all of my slides. And I'm going to show you what I do. Let me go down here. I got lots of slides that people have shared with me. So give me a second. I want to say. text for blended learning. All right. So this slideshow is not designed for anybody to see ever. It's for me. And I use it to create art or to create banners or to create like the stuff that you're getting in the email every day. The top of it has like my little bitmoji thing and it's the same every day. So those are all images that I've created and this is how I do it. So you have all of these slides and each one is a little bit different. So I was working with how I wanted grade three to look. I'm using different fonts and I have centered them together and made them look cute. But it, I can't insert this into a web page or put this onto a landing page or I can't do anything with it if it's in a Google slide just sitting there. I could go and go file and do download as a JPEG. I can do that and it would download the entire the entire slide with all the white area around it. Later on, I guess I could crop it if I wanted to. But instead, I'm going to use that ability to screen capture it. So I showed that in the doc a minute ago, depending on the device you're on, it will work differently. So I'm on my Mac, I'm going to do my command shift four. And it gives me this little tiny plus sign. And what I have to do is I have to drag across it. I always start in the top left corner of where I want the button or the image to be created 
and then I end in the bottom right corner. I could go from top right to top left. I cannot start in the middle. A lot of people, when I watch them trying to do this for the first time, they feel like they have to go in the middle to grab it, but let me do it so you know what I'm talking about. I'm in the top left corner and I'm clicking and holding and I am dragging and you'll see it's coming across. It almost looks like a button already. When I let go of it, it takes that screenshot and now it's in my computer. I have it saved in my computer. So now if I wanna to go to my Google site or to my landing page or to my whatever, I can now upload it as an image. You can see that I've had a few of them that are different. Um, I've gotten fancy with the emojis. Um, I wanted to make a title slide for, I actually made a um, tutorial on how to do this and it's on YouTube now. I'll make sure that that link goes into the, um, the Google Doc that I just showed you. I totally forgot I made that video, <laughs> um, but I wanted a logo for it. So that's how I was able to do that, just by adding more to it. These are all separate text boxes. And let me, let me um, dissect it so you can see. You can see these are all separate elements. Yeah, trying to grab the frame, there we go all separate and this one is all on its own as well so to be able to get it to be more of a picture i would have to put them all back together and then i could screenshot it control book command shift four and then drag across it and then i know it's an image so if i want to insert image upload from computer and it's going to be here now it's a picture. Moves around like a picture. It resizes like a picture. I can put it on my, whoops, I can put it on my website. I can put it anywhere. So the, the idea behind it is that you're creating things that are customized to your needs. So you're not spending hours on the internet looking for exactly what you want, only to find it and realize that it's copyright protected. You can also use, and I showed with, um, with Kim's name, that you can use emojis. One of my favorite sites is Emojipedia. I'll put that in the Google Doc too. So Emojipedia is an encyclopedia of emojis. So let's say that I wanted to be able to put in a teacher. So it's gonna give me all kinds of emojis down here maybe from different, um, different types of, like some come from Google, some come from Apple, just different places. But let's say I wanted to do the Apple. They're gonna show me the different versions of Apples that there are, because if you've noticed, if you're on Skype or if you're on your iPhone or if you're on Google, an Apple looks different. The same emoji looks different in different places. But up here is where I'm gonna grab it. So I'm going to click copy. There we go. I'm going to go back to my thing here. And let's say I wanted to put it on its own line. I'm going to go up and do insert text box. And then I'm going to vomit my apple in there, which is really little. So I'm going to highlight it. And I'm going to make it bigger, 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 bigger. Or I can type in the number 48 or I could type in the number 101, whatever size I want. Now that's like a piece of text, but I can use it now as part of a piece of artwork. So if I now slide it up closer to Kim, I could do my command shift four and I could drag across it. And that's a new image that then I can use in my website or my landing page or what have you. So it's a way to be able to create your own artwork without having to worry about copyright. I'm going to stop for a second. Are there, are there questions? Are there? Yes. There, uh, so regarding this, Sean O'Connor wants to know if there's a way to flip images from left to right view or top view, bottom view, and so forth. There is. There are. Well, I don't know what I just did with that image, but let me, um, I'll insert it. So I'm gonna to go to insert image, upload from the computer because that's where mine went. 
I'm going to get the one that I just made. So it comes into slides. This is one of my favorite things about slides. And I did this a lot with my Bitmoji, because sometimes I don't want her always facing the same way. So once you have your image in there, you can grab one box on the side and drag it across itself. And when you let go, it's backwards, which is really silly for text. But if it's something else that you need to go the opposite way, you literally just flip it. You can also do it top to bottom. So if I wanted it to be upside down, I could do that. Great question. Love that. And you, you can also do it um, from the tools up above. I think it's under range mm -hmm. can, or somewhere. You can flip horizontal or flip vertical. Rotate. Mm -hmm. yep. There you go. Yep. Right in here. Yes. Thank you. Sure. And then the second question is from Elise Shaden. She wants to know if Slido is an app or a CB extension? Um, I believe that it's a Chromebook extension. I know that a lot of you that are taking the modern teacher are finding all kinds of extensions and you're coming at me from everywhere. So that's what I'm going to work on tomorrow is getting the extensions into um, Chrome for you to be able to have access to. I won't force install them. I'll make it so that they're available to install and same thing for the students. I don't want to keep adding to their list of force installed apps and add-ons and extensions, but I'll make them like whitelisted so that they can go ahead and put them in there. So feel free to send me an email if there's some that you want to try and I'll put it in there. I'll do work on that tomorrow. I'm just helping. I'm helping. Um, sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Someone this comes real life. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Nope, not yet. Not yet. Okay. So, also, you can use. Let me go. Let me just create a blank slide. I can still play in here, and I don't like having these, so I always drag across them and I delete them, so it's all blank. I also could have gone to the down arrow and I could have chosen a blank slide, but um, when you're using the insert image and you're going to go search on the web one of the things that and this is designed to be giving you images that you should be able to use um, google doesn't guarantee that they're all like free to use but the idea is that they should be but if you were to go up here i'm going to move your my list of people and let's say i wanted to put in a tree I could just type in tree and I'm going to get a lot of photographs. That's not really what I want in this case. I want to be able to have a tree that's clip art. So I could write in clip art and it will give me some trees that way. Some of them might have a background that's transparent and some of them might not. So I like to do instead, although I really like this tree, I'm just going to put that one in there while I'm sitting here because I might, I might like using that. That one might be background free anyway. But anyways, let me go back over to, oh, I got to move your names again. Insert image, search the web. Instead of saying clip art, I'm going to use the word vector. Super fancy word. Now I know that all of these trees have no background. They're all going to be transparent white backgrounds. So let's say I want to use this tree. Now I have two. Okay. Uh, you're then able to float them on top of each other and they don't interfere. A lot of times when you're working with images that have a white background, as soon as you lay one on top of the other, then the white border kind of covers it up. When they're transparent, you could layer 10 trees in there and make a forest and they can all live together on the same screen. Something else that you can do is layer them, like right now, the most recent picture you've put in is the one that's on top. But let's say I want the creepy tree to go behind the bird tree. I can, I can right click on it and then I can go down to where it says order and I can send it to the back. Or if it were in the back, I could bring it to the front. So I send it to the back. It is now, uh -huh. it is now behind the happy tree that has the birds on it. But the happy tree is not a vector image, which is what I was trying to say before. All this white around it is actually not transparent. 
which is why it's good to look up vectors because now you can see the difference as to how an image that has that's not a vector image behaves as opposed to one that is a vector image that has a um, transparent background. Could Go I ahead, add Jenna. something? Um, yeah. If you if they have a, a photo that they want to use um, from their classroom or, or something like that, an image of their desk or something that's in their room that they want to include, yep. you can remove the background if you go to a website that's called remove.bg and mm -hmm. it has a little upload spot. All you have to do is uh, add the photo in there and it pops it right back to you without the background on it. So you could do that with any image that you get, like even this. You, um, we'll put that into the document as well because yes, those, um, those tools that remove the backgrounds are awesome. Mm -hmm. And then it does make it like a vector image and it behaves right. like it has no background. If you have a Mac, I know some of you are Mac users, you can also do it natively right in your Mac and um, you don't have to do it on the internet at all. You can do it right there, which I do for a lot of mine. Um, what was I just gonna share with you? Any questions while I'm thinking? No. Um, oh, I was gonna. <laughs> Sorry. No. That's all right. Okay. Insert image, not from my computer, from the web. I was going to go back again. Insert image. Search the web. All right. So I'm back over here again. Um, a lot of you are trying to create your Bitmoji classrooms, and I'll be doing that in the next session after lunch today. But you can also look for um, like furniture, like desks, and then you can bring them in here and they'll have no background. You can flip them around if you want it to be going the other way. So it's, it's definitely, see how it behaves over the tree. They don't really interfere with each other. Oops. Um, but on this one, it would, you'd see it disappears behind this if it's layered wrong or it, the actual tree, the happy tree, we're on top, it would cover up the desk. I lost my train of thought. Okay, let me go back. To let me close this. There's something I was going to share with you, and it totally fell out of my brain. Um, Susie, it'll come back to me. Go for it. Sorry, a couple people wanted oh. to know how to remove um, the background in a Mac when you said that you could do it in a Mac. Right. It's. I don't know if I can share that on my screen because I'm right now it's sharing Chrome, but if you use the, let me try it. I'm going to open up preview and let me open. Oh, I know what I'll do. So I'm going to take this desk. So I'm going to take a screenshot of the, uh, a screenshot of the desk here. So this is the image that I'm gonna play with. I know it already had no background, but the way that I just took the picture, I just added a white background. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second. And I am going to open up preview and I'm going to open up that screenshot. Now, I think if I go to share screen, I can look at this. Sometimes I surprise myself. Okay, so if you're not on a Mac, I'm only going to end up making you jealous. But what you can do once you're on a Mac and you get your picture in there, this is the desk and it does have a white background because I just took a screenshot of it. What I can do is I can go into the toolbox. Let me stretch this bigger so that you can see everything. Oops, sorry. I know you probably don't see any change on your screen, but I just lost it online. Here we go, make it bigger. And I'm going to go into the, wait a minute, where's my toolbox? Where's my toolbox that I use every day? Hang on. Is it because it's not, no, nope. sorry. Okay, I'll go to tools this way. Oh, so I am going to go in and, why is it not showing up? Sorry, everybody. Is it 
is it under three dots? Doesn't the Mac sometimes have three dots? Where yeah, there's usually. Tools and photos? I, I'm not seeing it. Usually there's like, it, it literally looks like a toolbox that you'd use. Um, can we also add contents, content sheet? Yeah. And over here, no, that just twists it. All right, shoo, there it is. Deep breath, Susie. That panic feeling is not a good one. All right, so now I have my tools. So over here, I'm going to click on this magic wand and I'm gonna kind of click and drag and it's gonna create this pink film. If I drag too much, it starts to put the pink film on my desk. I don't want that to happen. I'm just kind of moving my mouse around until I see the pink film where I want it. And then I'm letting go. It makes all the marching ants march around and now I'm gonna hit my delete key. So now that desk has no background. It's just like a vector image. So now I can save it. File, save. And now I can go back in. I have to stop sharing my screen. And then I can share it again because now I want to switch to Google Chrome again. Now I can go to insert image, insert image, upload from my computer. And I'm going to do the one that I just made, which is, you can see how it's different because it, when I took the background off, it kind of changed the way that it looks. The original is much better, but you can see that now it doesn't have, there's no thing around the outside. There's no white area around it. So on a Mac, you would do it through the preview app. That's where I did all of that. So once you find the toolbox, then you can get rid of the background on a Mac. I can make a, um, a, a tutorial that's a lot clearer than me doing it on the fly. Ooh. And you think that it's going to be right in front of you and it's not. Okay. Um, let me think of what else I wanted to be able to share in this. How else have I used it? Oh, I've used it to create, let me go to, let me just do a blank slide. Um, let me do a new blank slide. And one of the things that I've done is use it, where is it, it's up here, behind your words, is I go insert image, upload from my computer. I've already created an avatar and let me put it in there. So here's my little avatar. And if I wanted to make like a banner for the top of a website, if you create it on a slide and then you download the whole slide as your image, it's gonna to be too fat, it's just gonna to be too tall. So often what I'll do is I'll create something that has a more narrow, profile across the screen. So I have my little avatar. I might want to go back in here and grab professional development. The part that stinks that I've been fighting with is because I use one font for the capital P and a different font for the rest of the word, the computer thinks that I've spelled professional wrong. And believe me, I've looked at it 72 times and thought, did I spell it wrong? So I have to get rid of that little red underline. I'm going to right click on it and do ignore. So I want them to ignore my horrible spelling. So I'm going to do that first. And then I can do control shift four. I'm going to take a screenshot of just that. I'm going to go back to my little girl, insert image, upload. I know my screenshots go there. And then in it comes, it's way too big. I shrink it down. So now I'm starting to build one that goes across the screen. I don't like how when I do this, it covers her up. So I'm going to put her in front. I'm going to right click on her. And remember I did order before. Let's bring her to the front. So now I should be able to move her wherever I want. And she's not going to interfere with my professional development. She's way too big. But now I'm starting to get it to be more like a banner that goes across the top of something. 
So when I get ready, let's say it's beautiful and done, I can do control shift four and instead of just capturing right around her, I'm gonna capture all the way over here to all the way over here. So if you're creating a banner for your Google Classroom, like you could do custom banners there or for your Twitter account or for anything that requires a banner that goes all the way across the top, even your Google Sites, then you would actually clip in some of this white as part of your banner. So when I do that, it creates it as a long image. So now this image is a lot easier to put in as a banner at the top of your website or at the top of your Google Classroom. A Google Classroom um, banner, I'd have to look up the actual size. I usually just try and give a little extra white space around the artwork so that if I need to change the size or adjust it once it's in classroom, I can do that. But I know that I've had people ask like, how do I change the image in Google Classroom to something that, that I want instead of something that comes with classroom? How's everybody doing? Am I overwhelming you? Uh, somebody wanted to know if the the um, remove background site didn't work for them. Um, and I wondered if it could be because of the, it's a Chromebook, if they were using a Chromebook to mm -hmm. would that block it. That it block could, it. it could. And it depends on what type of um, like programming it uses. If it's a flash based site, then it's not that the Chromebooks can't use flash, but I would need to know what the site is. And then we have to enable it in the admin panel in the background. So, so can you a, remo add remove BG to the, because um, I, I know I would want my kids to use it too if, if they're yep. doing projects. So exactly. Okay. Yep. And then there's one more question here. Um, what's the difference between bringing to front and bring forward in the arrange menu? Oh, good question. All right. So I have my little girl. I have my professional development. Let me do, um, I'll, oops, let me go back here. Let me upload a third thing, insert image, uh, and I'll search the web, and we'll put a filing cabinet in there, our, our desk. So now I have three things. So let's say I want professional development to go on top of the desk, but I don't want it on top of the little girl. Let me move her over. So professional development is in the back. I'm going to click on that and right click on it and go to order. So if I bring it to the front, it's going to go above the girl and above the desk. If I bring it forward, it's only going to go, I believe, up one layer. So let's try bring forward first and see. All right, so the girl is in the back. So we have three layers right now. We have the girl on the bottom, the professional development in the middle, and the desk, I believe, is on the top. Yes, it is. So now I would really want to bring professional development maybe. Oh no, I want to bring the girl up one layer. So let's right click on her, bring her forward there. So now she's second, professional development is on the bottom and the desk is on the top. So I should be able to put her behind the desk. See how they're layered? If I wanted to move the desk back behind her, I could do right click, order, send backwards. Now she, the desk is behind her, but it's still on top of professional development. So if you have more than one item that you're trying to layer, that's where order comes in. The other thing that is really good, let me get rid of the desk because that's ugly. And let's move the little girl over. Let's say I have made this like pairing and I love the way that they look together and I don't want to have to keep moving them around separately. I can click and, oops, sorry little girl. I can click and drag across both of them. So now that they're both selected, I can go up to arrange or I could have right clicked and I could do group them. So now they are stuck together. So now no matter what, they're stuck together. Unless I say, oh, I don't want them stuck together. I can right click on them and then I can ungroup them and then they get divorced and you can separate them again. So you can do that if it makes it easier when you're moving stuff around, especially if you're doing your Bitmoji classroom. And let's say you have a whiteboard and you've put like four stickers on it and you wanna be able to move the whole thing four inches to the right, you can group them. You can also, besides just cause the way I grouped them was to click and drag across both of them. That's easy cause there's only two items in here. 
but if you had other items around it and you don't want to include them, you can click on the first one and then hold down your shift key and click on the second one and that puts them together. Then I can go up to arrange and group. I don't know, hopefully that makes sense. It's, it makes it a lot easier to move stuff around when you're designing too. So Susie, wouldn't that help mm -hmm. someone like Amanda had the question in la or, or a couple people had the question, um, what if they already made their Bitmoji classrooms and they're not, uh, they didn't make it as a background? Couldn't they group the whole thing right now? They could. And if they already yes. had things written, say, say they had a whole classroom and they had stuff written on the whiteboard, I would take the things off the whiteboard and group the whole thing together so they can keep changing the whiteboard every day. Right? Beautiful. Yes, okay. I love that suggestion. Okay. Yeah. Great. So, like what Deb's saying, um, hang on, I gotta, I gotta keep moving all of the, um, all of the stuff that's in the way. So like, let's say on this particular one, I wanna be able to change, <laughs> people waving at me, I'm like a, an animal in the zoo. Um, I wanna be able to change the Bitmoji classroom every time that maybe I open this particular one. I could take this actual, oops, my hands are all sweaty, so I'm clicking stuff I shouldn't. I could take this off, out of the way, It's not dragging for me here. I'm actually, let me delete it. I'm gonna do control X and take it out. Then I could group what's left, control A to select all of them. Then I could go to arrange, I could group them. So now they're all stuck, no matter where I move things, they all move together. They're all stuck together. My background is still there, but now if I want to, vomit in the one that I had there before. Now this is living all by itself. And if I change it or move it, it's not going to interfere with anything else. That's kind of what you meant, right, Deb? Yes. Okay. Good thinking. Yeah. I don't know where I was. Whew. Questions? Nothing. Nothing new. That's okay. Sometimes you just need to let it sink in. So I'm, I'm gonna go to the designing and I know that I'm gonna do it at the, at the top so I don't forget. We're going to put in there the remove background site and I'll have to add to extensions in Google. I'll remember to do that. Um, the emoji Wikipedia, where you can go in and find emojis. And remember, they're like text, so you can resize them just like you resize text. So if you want a big emoji, you just change the text size on it. So I'll put that link in there. What was the other thing that I saw? Anybody um, remember? Christine in um, the chat also recommends unscreen.com. Um, she said it removes backgrounds from a video and turns it into a GIF. Wow. Oh. Well, that's good. Yeah. Is it Jerry? <laughs> Nothing like spelling in front of a bunch of teachers. So I'll make these all links so that they're easy to go in there. Up above you wrote back site, so yeah. I, I know. And that, yeah. Back, background. <laughs> oh, look, why does it say back site? Background, there we go. So that'll give me some stuff to do. And then I'll also make a couple of screen casts on um, how to do it on a Mac. And I'll also I'll play with these and show you how to do it on a Chromebook too. That would be helpful. All right. So unless you guys have more questions, I don't mind stopping before 10 of, if you still have questions, obviously I'm gonna stay here until 12, but what I think I'll do is hit stop recording. So let me go to this. And stop share and then stop recording. All right.